South Africa is swiftly moving from being a third world country to a world standard livable country. The benefits of being a South African are enormous, so as the responsibility that comes with it. Our urban areas have enjoyed quality roads that got a boost in 2010 when we hosted the World Cup. That saw our national roads being upgraded to being world class. Now having world class roads means we have to find world class methods to maintain them. But what many South Africans are asking is, is the e-tolling system the right method to maintain these roads? Today on Tokese, we're going to be looking at the unresolved ongoing issue of the Gauteng e-tolling system. Come with us as we find out the factors, the facts and the opinions. But Babanga Taban Lakadi Ito Talk S A Ebatile Hutseba Horba Han Mobal the Lang Hagata. I don't know why. Like it's there's no point to it. I mean we pay enough taxes and everything, and then they still want us to pay more money for roads that were meant to be built in the first place and they're still not finished. So I don't see why I must pay each one up as well. And why is it only Gauteng? Why not the whole of SA? First of all, I understand that the purpose is to pay for all the construction they did. Uh, I don't believe that it's worth us paying every time we pass through. Uh, there are toll routes that are already in existence. We pay for those routes, but then in addition, there are optional routes which don't, uh, which are not tolled. So now if they're going to have e-toll, then we don't have any options that are not tolled. That's unfair. I think the initiative of the e-tolls isn't bad. I think that um, drivers need to pay for the roads that they're using and I think that by it's targeting the northern suburbs so it's targeting the people that can't afford to pay for it. Look I think it will go towards helping our roads. I'm just not sure if they need to be charging as much as they are and you know, I, I don't think they're going to need that much. I think there's a lot of people who drive who won't be able to afford it, and I just think that's going to be a really big problem. Um, but, yeah, towards the economy, it probably will have a quite a good effect on our roads, I think. The government already collects a lot of money from all the, the national roads. So if you're traveling between provinces, so what's the need for to collect more money just for people to go to work every day? Uh, I'm not going to get tagged. Never. Uh -uh. Why should I? If no one gets tagged, it's going to fall apart. If no one does it, it's going to fall apart. Lende tolls the color we've about two years ago. Uh, when they understand good is about connect discount if you register and go go and buzzer hands are lula, but going to get as a discount cook for mana la tag and then I'm for go go so I'll cover legacy by dollar about 550 low my less is less in Kenai. I'm not a job and dear every day because if Negan DM 17 and then friend pin and boy the foot in the pin and the lag always tag as fun because he tolls as a fan. So if weekends and 
Uzoya towards Ugulungisin, Lela, what is Benin, Lelez Lungil. But it's not like before, as in Lelazas, Lungsuin, Lelaza, Sahoutin, Wagugu, B, Ewegasia, Gutinian, Gazab, and Kulana, Gabaconi lanes as in Nins, Nalapas or lanes, Nanka Benefiti, honestly, because the traffic is MB, Dundoshala for two hours. And you get low Maliba Bay seven circle in maintainers in Lela, good tening a second. So, I mean, we department, our transport gets a budget. Sina told a successes battle on the N3, Nalapo Lomali. So, in my list, a successes battle from a tax aid, Zitona Mabanga Samusta Lugut no Imali Yongi Zoya towards the development of Ezinjela because that is entirely, entirely not true. And it's unfair. Good news of Spalili information and Spalili information in pieces. And I knew Spalili would know Imalengaga is Zoya towards Ulung Sinjela and the Nipotian and Gaga is going towards Ubadala for Ugwa Kiwa Ezinjela. The information layer, I think, needs to be told to us. Mag, be honest entirely. At the end of the day, Zimali Zetu is a and goes bad and it tolls every month, every month. But and yes, but he mali chona be and at the same time, but I know Ulungi Sintlen. And yeah, on Naglapo, what guarantee do we have? But as it was a shallow five fifty. So as Ganja and Guti next year, I was watching Jagman Guta is a nuga because when you go up, when you go up, when you go low, when you go petrol, because when you get it tolls and about the new game, when you go good, I mean. Sing a band of Nasipa Dale, e insurance, Sipa Dala, e tax, Sipa Dala, e rent, Le Male Male, and you guessing at the seat like the Salu Tiger, each one up. Sipale and on government money spy, good to move Nagambo registered a for retag and Gabinayo. The Senate term, good to Shambe, Lent, the Sazo, Gimani, Kubele, a Sibon, good to Zopelab, the Seglo, a local group of South Africans as Nagafuni called Lelo Londo, and the Ami e tag and Gabinayo in Kalilinian. As the conins in Lela, I backroots, Uxuga Pito, Lubia, a Jobek. So I can in the Afnegan in Genegui Highway and Gango send this semi giant in the South China as a Jobek. So yeah, Masitana Zeni, the stronger family. See how good the government you'll see because this is Zelle no back and so Bonana get because of it all. Oto ke hore o lo ingodisa ka patshehe re sa ya mabenkeleng dula jwalo Afrika borwa in the interest of society people are not very aware of those kinds of benefits we tend to forget about them pretty quickly we do think that there's a scope for relooking at it and thinking a more fair and equitable one Organizations like the DA, the Opposition to Urban Tolling Alliance and COSATU have all expressed their opposition to the fact that SANRA wants to erect e-tolls on the majority of Gauteng's highways. Hota Shebisi Sahantle Tabae, Talk SA, Ile University of Pretoria, Hota Buale Professor Yadi Civil Engineer. Ena he, ola re hlalo setsa hore molemo wa go lugisa tsela tse golo ke ofeng. Ha re mo mameleng handle. If there's one thing that we've learned from the whole e-tolling experience, it is that uh, providing uh, building roads is a very expensive uh, enterprise and um, especially if we are building roads and using them primarily uh, or having them primarily used by car users. Uh, you know, transport is not a cheap thing to provide. The Alliance is an association of various associations such as Sovrala, uh, Sanku, the consumer union, the, the retail motor industries and uh, um, Satsa uh, and Kwaza, the Quad Para Association. And together we formed this team to enable us to take this matter to court uh, after seeing so much of what was wrong with e-tolling and the manner in which uh, Sanra and the government had gone about deciding to, to, to raise funds for these roads, which we believe is irrational and very uh, expensive and very uh, inefficient. We're in a situation where Sanral, the National Roads Agency, uh, they did what their job was uh, to do, which is uh, to provide and upgrade the, the country's roads and to maintain them properly and, and so on. Um, what, what I think didn't take place uh, earlier on in the process that might have helped a lot was to situate the whole 
uh, Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project and the whole e-toting together with that, um, within a larger conversation of what, you know, what, what kind of transport systems do we want for Gauteng? What, how do we see the province growing and changing into the future? There are a few ways of paying for infrastructure that we use as, as public and one of them is to make people pay is for every little bit of that infrastructure that they use and to make them pay when they use it and we call that the user pays principle and that is uh, that's essentially what tolling is it asks for me as the user asks of me as the, as the user to pay every time when I use a piece of road rather than to just pay generally for all transport or all roads through my taxes se kolotosa sanral ke 37 billion Chalete e kanka 20 billion e kolo twa kidi e tolls. Ha kolo itse 157,000 di patala 550 rands kahwedi e refa 86 million 350,000 rand. Anna te la taruna di tura hakalo. The motorist is low hanging fruit for government. They the motorist is perceived to be more affluent than the average person, but that's not necessarily true. Um, when we had our, our um, campaign to protest about this, a lot of people come forward and they actually um, gave input to the original court case um, before Judge Prinsloo. And they showed how they were little mom and pop businesses or just pop businesses where they were struggling to make ends meet and they're on the highways day in and day out and they're going to have to cough up an extra 550 rand a month. It's a lot of money if prices stay the way they were originally um, gazetted. Our preferred method is a national fuel levy um, and we believe that somewhere between 9 and 10 cents would uh, be all that would be required. So nine cents per litre would raise about 1.9 billion rand a year, which is what you need to, um, to fund the infrastructure, capital costs, as well as interest over 20 years. And the sad thing is that if we had added that nine cents to the fuel price in 2006 when the GFA plan was mooted, um, plus the 5.7 billion that Treasury had given uh, to Sanral for these roads last year, you would have raised already over 16 billion rand. You would have paid for the capital costs already today had they've gone down the sufficient process, but they didn't decide to do that. Instead, they decided to in introduce a very cumbersome, very inefficient, very impractical way of trying to raise funds out of society, far too costly, and that's why you have the anger and the frustration, because citizens are now fed up with the waste of their taxpayers' money. This is certainly not born in the interests of society. We, we've done some research uh, looking at the, you know, the distribution of tolls uh, and the distribution of taxes if people were to pay through the fuel taxes uh, versus uh, the use of the freeways in Gauteng. And we found that uh, tolling is really the most um, equitable, the most fair way of, of uh, making the users who benefit from freeway expansion really pay for that. If we were to try to cover the same costs through the fuel taxes, uh, we, we will find that uh, poorer people, poorer drivers, who tend to use the freeways less, would actually be paying more than their fair share. The highways are looking good, but it's unfair to, to the, the common working man because his salary is not going to increase. But now he's going to have to pay more, so it's less money that he gets to spend on his family for necessities. You know, petrol's already expensive enough, and now I feel like if we have to pay for e-tolls as well, it's a little bit, yeah. you know, it's not going to be great. I stay in the east, so I go through highways every day. I've since then discovered back routes so that I can avoid the highways as much as possible. <laughs> well basically we're students and uh, we travel 36 kilometers to Varsity and 36 kilometers back. On our way here we've counted we're going to pass through six gantries. So as students how is that going to affect our pocket? we we'll leave the maths to you. Resebiri sees the e-toll calculator. E bonsang hore abuti enwa aga patala 314 rand 40 kahweidi. Ha zama ya sepete peting zadi leling le leling. You mustn't hide the user pay um, behind making the user pay more than what the cost of the service that is enjoying cost. That's what's happening at the moment. The 
Motorist is being milked and it's costing far more through this e-toll system than it would have cost if we just levied the same user through the fuel levy. I think it's difficult to, uh, you know, to, to say whether people are overreacting. That's, that's obviously, uh, you know, that comes from an individual perspective. Uh, I think what, uh, what, what we do see is that people respond to what they see in front of them. Uh, people are very worried about the high costs, and so people respond to the high costs of the tolls that they see in front of them. The, uh, the thing that, uh, that people tend to, sort of, to not see or, or maybe forget quickly is also what benefits they've gotten from the whole freeway expansion project. Um, we, we, uh, you know, the, the, the GFIP has been in operation already for at least two years after the construction stopped. So we've had uh, many, well, two years of, of less congestion, uh, getting quicker to your destination, uh, maybe lower, lower freight costs, lower costs of delivering goods through the province and so on. Uh, people are not very aware of those kinds of benefits. We tend to forget about them pretty quickly. Uh, and, uh, and people uh, don't really often take that into account when they, you know, when they make up their mind about whether to support the e-tolling or not. Sandral, e kupilwe se baka sa ho i talosa. Imba, ba ile ba hana. They could have done... Kopana le runa studio ng hari raro la tabayena ya ba hanni. Ribile re atelwa ke se tibi sa mara keng le se tibi sa tores. South Africa, for instance, we're still struggling with yeah, uh, less, uh, uh, and unemployment is an issue. Welcome into our kitchen for the high tea segment. We're going to be talking to economist Lebo Mutsuki, who's going to be helping us unpack the economical impact of e-tolls being in place. And we also have Mike Titalius, and he's from the Southern African Tourism Service Association. He's going to be helping us look at what will happen to tourism in our um, country should e-tolls be put in place. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. So tell me, were all the parties um, consulted on this issue before they decided on e-tolls being implemented? Although we were notified many years ago as to which roads were going to be used or to be modified or put on the, on the tolling system, very little of the detail came out. And as a tourism industry through, remember the tourism is not just tour operators, hotels, there's also car hire yeah, and a couple of other yeah, aspects yeah. to it. We were concerned from a broad variety of uh, aspects. And we wanted to know how it was going to affect our vehicles traveling on the roads, how we were going to interact with it, could we do monthly accounts or have to pay cash? What was it going to be? Mm -hmm. And over the years that we tried to interact, we found very, very little information. So we don't feel that we were properly mm -hmm. consulted in the process. Right back in the beginning, we said the simplest way to do this would probably be through uh, fuel levy. Then everyone pays. It's simple. It's collected at the pumps instead of going through a high administrative process. But we don't feel we were properly and adequately consulted right in the beginning. We knew it was coming. In fairness, we did know it was coming. But all we knew was that which roads were going to be affected. Yeah. And what are the, impl the implications on SMMEs? With the research that I've done, it, it goes to show that it will impact uh, definitely the tourism sector. I travel a lot myself, and I can give an example. Uh, Queensland, state of Queensland in Australia. I travel uh, using the eToll system, and uh, guess what? Uh, you will uh, make the taxi fee in terms of your eToll will get passed around to you. So you can see already that from a consumer point of view, even from a business point of view, business people will pass down the cost to the consumers. At the end of the day, the person who's going to suffer the most is not the business. Business will still make money, but the consumers will suffer the most. So that's where the issue is. Uh, with regards to the e-toll system, and I do agree with Mike with regards to notification. However, I believe that uh, they could have uh, done a further investigation and evaluation to see if this will have a uh, social economical impact to, to, to people. Exactly. Do you think that there's still a way for us to avoid these e-tolls? Is it really, I mean, is it a dead end and must we just be strong? Well, we're not sure that the technical systems are actually capable. It's a very complex system. And I think there's still scope for, um, to, we, we as an industry are still inter interacting with the government, with the Department of Transport. Okay. We do think that there's a scope for re-looking at it and thinking a more fair and equitable one. 
as, as with Liberal, we're concerned about the amount of money it's going to take out of the system. We, we are happy to pay for the roads. That is a basic well, thing. We've already got the roads. Well, and they have been expanded. Yeah. We're, so we're happy to do the payment for it. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying we're not going to pay mm. for what's already been built. We want to find the most cost-efficient way yeah. of collecting the money. And we feel with this high, burdensome administrative system that comes with the e-tolls, that virtually more than 50% of every rand that you collect is going into the admin system. So we don't think that's paying for the roads. So we think if we did it off a fuel levy or something simple like that where everybody contributes, then we could, we could make it work. Because mm. we do have to pay for the roads, but we need to take as little additional money out of the economy as possible. And how can motorists empower, empower themselves, though, um, now with the situation? You know, like we say, it takes out so much money from your discretionary budget. So how can people empower themselves? Already in South Africa, we're having an issue with our savings. And as you can see, uh, if you take a, a, a much out of people, and uh, the other industry will suffer. The trickle-down effect of e-toll, it's not affecting only where it's based, like Gauteng. It's, it's going to affect all other provinces. And that's where, uh, from an economic uh, point of view, looking at tourism, that where job creation uh, will suffer the most. Because tourism has been our flag bearer in the economy. They've been producing excellent results when it came to like job creation. When I say job creation, I'm talking long term, not short term contractual work, of which uh, infrastructure development project are aimed to do. That's not how we can build the economy and, and drive our economic output to the satisfactory level whereby everyone will get uh, employed and enjoy uh, 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 being in South Africa. Yeah, exactly. I totally, yeah, you know, and I, I totally agree. There's so many different factors and so many different um, um, sectors that will also be affected. We can keep talking about it, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. So if you'd like to carry on with the conversation, please make sure that you um, follow us on Twitter. Our page is Talk SA, or you can join us on our Facebook page, also Talk SA. You can also engage with me on Twitter at I am Bama and on Facebook as well at I am Bama. So make sure you keep talking. That's the only way that we can make sure decisions are not made for us, but that we're also part of the decision making in our country. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been awesome chatting with you. Selebale ho kopa na Facebook ung kapare romele mai kutwa alona ho double three one two zero.